What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm out here working my day job. You know, if I'm not bowling, I'm a delivery driver. That's what I do to pay the bills, pay my fees as far as tournaments. So I'm waiting for my next order to pick up. So anyway, I figured it would be a good time to kind of sit down and have a chat about what it's like being on staff with a bowling ball company. Also what it took to not only get on staff in the beginning, but also you know, what it took to get to the point I am now, which is on staff with the same ball company, but now starting to get out on the PBA and compete. So let's begin with what did it take to get on staff with the ball company? Well, for me, it was just as easy as having a friend on Facebook who let me know that, hey, you know, this particular company is looking for amateur level bowlers. Are you interested? And I said, yeah. I'm definitely interested, you know, and he referred me, I put it in the application, and that was that. That was about four years ago for me, and at that point in time, I was not exactly the greatest bowler out there, you know, I was averaging just just barely in the 170s, I had shot a 300, you know, I was one of those bowlers who, you know, I, I shot my first 300 when my average was actually quite low, which <laughs> shocked me shocked everyone around me too I'm sure but you know and I hadn't quite decided if I was going to keep with the two-handed game or you know try and improve my one-handed game I was kind of in that middle section there so anyway I got the application turned in and it was up to the bowling ball company at that point California Bowling to accept or deny and to my shock and surprise they accepted the application and they offered me a introductory contract which basically meant you know hey buy a couple bowling balls, try them out, see how they feel. If you like it, we'll move you into an area contract. And so I did. I bought two Terminator Armageddon symmetrical solid balls, which, you know, are were some of the older bowling uh, balls from the company, and drilled them up, tried them out, found out that they were actually fairly decent for me. So I, I liked what I saw, and I was like, okay, let's take this further and see where it goes. Now, keep in mind, at this point in time, I had no idea what the future was going to look like. You know, I, I knew that I wanted to get myself out there on the PBA and start competing at the PBA level, but I didn't quite understand what it was going to take to get there and just how much work it was going to take to get there. And also, you know, I didn't understand whether or not that would be with California Bowling or some other bowling company in the future. Because at this point in time of signing that first contract, California Bowling did not have a PBA certification. You know, uh, the company was originally Lane Masters back in the early 2000s. They had some financial backing back then, and at that point in time, they were PBA certified. But due to circumstances beyond their control, you know, uh, the biggest thing being that the main financial backer for the company unfortunately passed away, they couldn't maintain their PBA certification. So they stayed in business and just dropped the PBA certification and you know, kept releasing balls that were USBC certified, you know, more advertised towards the amateur league bowlers. So anyway, I signed the area contract um, and I looked at it as basically an opportunity for me to grow myself as a bowler on top of helping this company, California Bowling, grow their three brands. Those three bands, those three brands being Lane Masters, Lord Field, and of course our most popular brand these days, Swag. So, there I was four years ago, got a new area contract with California Bowling, and now the question was, what do we do from here? One thing you have to understand as an amateur bowler is if you're going to be on staff with a ball company, what's most important is whether or not you can help sell bowling balls. You know, it's a company, it's a business. In the end, they're looking at their end of the month, their end of the year, and whether or not they're in the green or in the red. And they're also looking at wanting to expand, right? So you have to be somewhat of a salesperson if you want to be on staff with a ball company. That's just the nature of it. You know, it's not just bowling. It's selling, you know, selling bowling balls, selling bowling equipment, bowling shoes if the company in particular sells that stuff, bowling jerseys, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of promoting that happens. A lot of direct selling, a lot of indirect selling. So that is a large part of being on staff with a ball company that I think a lot of amateur level bowlers just don't quite understand. You know, when I 
was looking at getting on staff, I thought it was, you know, hey, I'm going to sign a staff contract. I'm going to get on staff, hopefully. And then, you know, I'm going to be sponsored and I'm going to get free equipment. And I thought all these things, misconceptions, misunderstandings of the situation and what it actually is. You know, for, so for California Bowling, you know, as far as getting on staff, I would say the process was a little bit easier than getting on staff with Brunswick or Storm or some of the other bigger ball brands. And I think that's purely because, you know, California Bowling does have an amateur level staff. Whereas I'm not 100% sure whether or not Storm, Brunswick, and, uh, you know, Radical and those other companies, I don't know if they have an amateur level staff or not. And if they do, I'm not entirely sure what they're looking for for their amateur level staff. You know, for them, I'm pretty sure what they're looking at is, okay, is this person associated or affiliated with a pro shop? Can we put them on the pro shop staff? If obviously they are, well, I'm sure that's something that will help. And I'm sure they're also looking for, does this person bowl on the PBA? If they do, do they have any titles? If they have titles, what are those titles? How many of them do they have? What kind of presence do they generate on the PBA? Because again, that's where their focus is at because they're a bigger company. They gain a lot of sales from the PBA because you know, amateur bowlers watch the PBA. They see somebody like Jason Belmonte throw a storm ball down the lane in a game and ends up winning a major with it. So that goes a long ways towards promoting that company and helping that company grow. <clears throat> So I'm sure that plays a huge role in getting on staff with the other companies. Again, I'm not associated with Storm, Brunswick, 900 Global, Radical, or any of the other ball companies, so I can't really say for sure whether or not that plays a big part. What I know is what played a big part for me with California Bowling. So anyway, four years ago I started that journey. Um, in the middle there, I spent a lot of time learning about the two-handed bowling game getting better at the two-handed bowling game, increasing my average, dedicating myself to practice, you know, also on the side, working on growing the brand in my area, which ended up being rather difficult because in this particular area, Storm 900 Global really kind of has a lockdown on the market. And so it's trying to grow a smaller bowling ball company in this particular area. And I've made a little bit of progress here and there. So, you know, it's it's a work in progress situation. It's It's just something that you have to keep working on over time. And like I said, in the middle there, the over the last two years in the middle, I spent a lot of time getting better at my game, learning more about the bowling industry as a whole, um, you know, understanding bowling ball layouts, surface modifications, things like that. And all of that, on top of being on staff with California Bowling, helped me become a better bowler and a better person to represent California Bowling in my area. You know, the cool thing for me was, is California Bowling was giving me a chance. You know, I, I started back bowling when I was in my 30s. You know, I bowled as a youth at a very young age. I started bowling when I was 11 years old, and I spent my entire, uh, you know, high school and middle school years essentially bowling. I bowled from the point that I was 11, 12 years old all the way up until I was 17 and graduated high school. Um, you know, and then I quit bowling because I went on and focused on other things. You know, went to college, got married, had kids, all that stuff, and didn't end up coming back to bowling until I ended up turning 30. So, you know, at that point, California Bowling was willing to give me the opportunity to grow myself as a bowler by helping me out with my equipment. You know, when you're on staff with a ball company, you do get discounts on equipment. You don't get free equipment. You know, I want to squash that uh, particular misconception right here. I mean, the, basically the way it works, at least with California Bowling, is the higher level of staff you get, the cheaper the equipment gets. So it's basically incentive-based, more or less. You know, the, the more bowling balls you sell, the better contracts you obtain. Those contracts, of course, have better discount rates for you as the staff member, and that's how it works. So... You know, it's not just sign the contract and then all of a sudden you get free bowling balls or heavily discounted bowling balls. It's something you have to work at building from one level all the way up to the next. So let's fast forward. You know, it's been four years. Uh, I've put in a lot of work, a lot of effort. When I started out at uh, California Bowling, I was averaging about 170. 
to the point I am now. I'm uh, as of last league night. You know, I came out with an average of 222. That raised my average another couple pins. So now I'm at I believe like 208 or 209 uh, league average. So I'm to the point now where I've raised my, raised my average a lot. I've competed in tournaments with our bowling equipment. You know, I've got my PBA card. I'm going to start competing on the PBA here soon. You know, I've come a long ways. And the cool thing about that was, is over that span of four years, I was able to watch California bowling grow from what it was in the beginning to what it is now. You know, Swag, one of the brands out under the California bowling company, is now PBA certified, which is awesome because that, to me, anyway, about a year ago was the next step I was looking to make, is to get to that PBA level. And at that point, about a year ago, I was looking at it going, you know, I... I just don't know if this is going to be something I can keep doing with California Bowling because it would require me to have two entirely different arsenals. You know, the agreement essentially was at the time, you know, if you're competing on the amateur level, you must throw the California Bowling equipment and all that kind of sort of thing, and that's what I was doing. But if you're going to go up to the PBA level, you're going to have to get an entirely different arsenal that's PBA certified because they weren't PBA certified. And then the announcement came out that, hey, we're going PBA certified, which was awesome. So I was stoked to hear that. As soon as I heard that, I started working even harder towards achieving my goal because I really wanted to represent California Bowling on the PBA. Now, as far as getting that contract to bowl on the PBA for California Bowling representing Swag, you know, I think a lot of what played into that is them recognizing the work ethic that I had over the last four years with California Bowling. You know, putting in a lot of effort to not only improve my own bowling experience, but also putting in the effort by helping out the youth program here, training youth bowlers, being involved on the amateur level as far as tournaments, and doing everything I could to promote the equipment in my area. I think that played a huge part of getting that PBA contract with them. You know, because I, I don't have experience on the PBA. The most experience that I have is about two years worth of amateur level tournaments, which again, Amateur tournaments are not easy. They are actually quite difficult to compete in. There's a lot of good amateur bowlers out there. And to be honest, you know, I am still at that point on the amateur tournaments where I've started to cash in tournaments, but I haven't gotten way high in the rankings and, you know, like placed in the top, you know, 10 or 5 or the top few. You know, I've won a few tournaments here and there, smaller scratch tournaments. But I haven't, you know, really gotten to the point of winning one of the bigger scratch tournaments. And at the point I am now, you know, I have to make that switch from focusing on the amateur tournaments to now focusing on the PBA because it's going to be a completely different world. The level of bowling is a lot better, of course. The bowlers are more experienced. The patterns you bowl on, of course, are going to be a lot more difficult. So it's just one of those things. You have to make that jump, eventually speaking, from amateur to professional and you have to start gaining experience on the professional side. You know, as far as should you wait until you start cashing in those events on a common basis and maybe winning tournaments consistently on the amateur level? To be honest with you, I don't agree with that because, again, there's a difference in the experience level required to do well on the amateur side and to do well on the professional side. In my opinion, it makes more sense to now focus purely on the professional side of bowling instead of the amateur side of bowling. Yes, I'm going to still be involved in bowling leagues, but as far as the amateur level tournaments, not going to be hitting very many of those unless I absolutely have to, just because not only do I have to start putting my finance, not only do I have to start putting money towards those professional style tournaments, I also have to start dedicating time to preparing for those tournaments. So anyway, guys, hopefully that helped you out a little bit as far as understanding what it takes to get on staff with a ball company. And once you're on staff, what it takes to stay on staff and, you know, move up to a different area of staff. And, you know, for those of you out there, what it takes to get to the PBA. You know, this journey of mine is not over yet. You know, it's not like I'm going to go out there and win my first event, you know, to be honest with you. You know, I... I'm going to go out there and, of course, start competing, and it's going to be a learning curve. It's going to take some time. You talk to any professional bowler out there, and they will tell you there is a process to getting good on the PBA. It's not just you go out there and you start winning. Well, 
unless you're somebody like Jason Belmonte, <laughs> which, you know, he's just an entirely different level as far as bowling is concerned. You know, that, that dude is just amazing. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video today. Hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. Please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below and leave a like. And I will see you guys in the next video.